Well, they finally did it. The government of California yesterday voted to eliminate the solar net metering program. What does this mean for prospective solar homeowners? And what does this mean for people that have already made the investment in solar power? We're going to be answering those questions in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past nine years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we talk about everything that has to do with solar power, battery backup systems for your home, um, sometimes even generator systems as well. Uh, we also cover relevant industry news going on in the solar industry, like today's video here. And that's why it was so important that I got today's video out so quickly, because yesterday evening, the California Public Utilities Commission just voted to end the solar net metering program in California. Now, what does that mean? I, I know most of you watching this channel have already been following this and you know what net metering means, but for those of you who are new to the subject of solar energy, what net metering means is that your relationship with the power company is an equal two-way relationship, meaning that uh, if you have solar power available, uh, an excess solar power available, not only can you use it to power your home directly, but you can also export your extra solar, in other words, you can send it back out your electric meter for full price credit. And what happens is that, that electricity will flow out of your meter and then they'll sell it to one of your neighbor's house. And, and the utility company will give you full price credit for that excess solar electricity that you generate. And having that full credit is important because after the sun sets during evening hours, you're gonna be pulling energy back in from the utility, assuming you don't have your own battery storage. Uh, so you're gonna be pulling electricity back in from the utility during evening hours. And so you wanna use those credits that you built up during daytime hours. That's what you, you would want ideally is a full true one for one net metering credit. You send them a kilowatt hour, you take a kilowatt hour from them, it all balances out even. But what they voted to do yesterday was move away from a net metering program to what's called an avoided cost program. So what that means is this, let's say during daylight hours, your solar system is producing at full power and you have more electricity than what you need to power your home. The excess that you send back to the power company, instead of crediting you at the full retail price, which in parts of California now is 30 cents per kilowatt hour. That, that's what they charge you when they're selling it to you. Well, they're now gonna pay you a much lower rate of only eight cents per kilowatt hour. And their rationale is, well, you know, when we buy, when we buy wholesale power from the power plant, we're only paying that lower wholesale rate of about say six, seven, eight cents per kilowatt hour. Then we sell it to the resale customer at 30 cents and we make, we make a, a margin in between. That's how they make their profit. And so what the Utilities Commission has now agreed with the utilities and said that, yeah, I guess that's right. If they have excess solar power, the power companies don't have to give them full credit. This is talking to homeowners now. Don't have to give homeowners full credit for the excess solar. They can just pay them at the lower wholesale rate, just like they would buy power from a power, com uh, from a power plant. So what that means is if you're making an investment in rooftop solar for your home, this is gonna cut your return on investment. Some cases cut it in half. Now, this is not the end of the world, but if you're just purely making your decision on whether or not to go solar based on financial projections that a solar salesperson told you, or based on your own financial analysis, then the, the, the payback period for rooftop solar in California, if you're talking about just a straight net metering system, no batteries, your payback period can now double. I mean, now you could be looking at a four year payback on your solar to now maybe an eight or nine year payback on your solar. So there's serious implications here. Now, the new rules take effect in 120 days, which means that if you wanna take advantage of the current one for one net metering program that's still in effect right now, you have 120 days to get your application in. 
So if you're in the process of looking at solar power options for your home, um, if you've already got quotes, or maybe if you need to get a price quote so you can agree on pricing, figure out your equipment and get the process started so we can get the paperwork filed within the next 120 days, um, as always, you can go ahead and reach out to us on the link below. We can chat with you, get the system spec'd out with you, and then go ahead and get, get the process started. Now, if you're an existing solar homeowner and you're already signed up with a net metering program, you don't have to worry about these changes affecting you. Existing California net metering customers are grandfathered in for the next 20 years. So if you've already made your investment in solar, you're not gonna have the rug ripped out from under you, right? You can continue to export your solar energy at full retail price credit when you have excess solar available. But for those of you who have not made the investment in solar yet, what this means is that you really are gonna to wanna to take a look at the battery storage option. And what battery storage allows you to do is, instead of having to sell your excess solar to the power company at a significantly discounted rate, you can just store your excess solar energy in a bank of batteries at your home so that when the sun goes down and you don't have any solar being directly produced, you can then power your home off the battery using the stored energy uh, in the battery from what you charged during the daytime hours. So it still allows you to have full solar coverage of your home without relying on the power company to, to be the battery for you or that without relying on them to, to give you full price credit for any excess solar energy that you can't use or store yourself. So if you've been considering solar power or particularly if you've been considering solar power but you've been on the fence of whether or not the battery investment makes sense, well, it, it makes sense now if you're in California. And I should still tell you that although the, the, the full net metering is going away in California, because electric rates are so high, I mean, right now, electric rates in California can be up to 30 cents per kilowatt hour compared to another market where we operate, Florida, where it's more like 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So your payback in California has actually been far better than the rest of the country because the, the electricity price is so high there, it means your solar pays back faster. What that means is that now you can get a solar and, and even get a, a full house battery back up to go with it. And generally you're still gonna have a faster payback than a, a comparable homeowner in, in Florida or Texas or, or here on the East Coast where I live because our electricity rates just aren't that high. And so the value of the electricity coming off our solar panels is just not as high as what it is for you in California. So again, this is why guys, I always advocate to consider battery storage with your solar. Um, you know, if you've, if you've heard one of these sales pitches or you hear people talking about, oh, you've got to go solar because you're going to stick it to the power company, you know, go solar and stick it to the power company. There is no stick it to the power company. Okay. The power companies have a state sponsored monopoly. And so if the power companies are ever losing money, they just go to the state legislature and the state legislature says, oh, would you just, just tell just tell us how much you need and we'll change the regulation. We'll change it and you can go ahead and raise your prices. So this idea that you're going to stick it to the power company by going solar has been a farce the entire time. In fact, if you're on a net metering program, you are a partner of the power company and you are relying on the power company to take and sell your excess electricity when you can't use it to take it and sell it and monetize it by selling it to somebody else. So if you're net metering with no storage, you are a partner of the power company. But what the battery storage allows you to do and why I'm such an advocate of this technology is because it puts you in a position where you can take control of your energy situation, not only generating the electricity you need during daytime, but giving you the ability to store that electricity right there on your property so that you, you can use it as you see fit whether you choose to use your own energy at nighttime to avoid having to buy from the, the power company, um, or if, if the power company has gone away, if there's a, a, you know, a, a, a damage to the electric grid, or if the, the electric grid is unstable for whatever reason, well, fine, you can take them or leave them on your terms because you have solar and batteries, which means you can harvest energy, you can store energy, and you can consume it on your own terms. So that's why I advocate for solar plus storage. So again, guys, if, if you're watching this and you're in California and you've been on the fence of, does this even make sense for me? Look, if you wanna get some options and look at some real numbers and really just kind of talk through your intended energy scenario, you know, as always, just feel free to reach out to us. You can book a short Zoom call with one of our experts here. 
We'll talk through everything with you and we'll come up with a game plan of how to get you energy independent and how to do it in a way that gives you the best dollar for dollar return on investment. Well, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we publish on Solar Surge, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, right now, we're trying to get one to two videos out for you every week, at least one to two. And so by subscribing, it'll make sure that those videos will show up in your feed so that you can keep up with us and keep up to date with everything that's going on in the industry here. Um, as always, if you need to get a price quote for solar, we always offer uh, to have a short, uh, no obligation consultation with you on a Zoom meeting. We can chat through what your needs and requirements are and then get some pricing and information over to you right away. Well, folks, I thank you for taking time to share with Solar Surge today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.